We need to fix that. Well, since I have everybody here, I'll just answer for them, okay? <laughs> Put, point to their name. This is, the this is Richard's <laughs> response. This is Tim's response. Yeah. This is my response. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we know yours. That's what she was trying to send him out here. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe try calling him and, and get him that way. Well, I tell you, in France, it's pretty severe. You need papers to go anywhere with your ID card. And if the police or a soldier or a guard ask you for those papers, you don't have them. 150 euro, and they called you Hello. home. Hey, we've got you back. Yeah, we're back. In Belgium. Councilor Benger, you got you back again? Hi, uh, you're back, yep. Yeah. Belgium, everything is closed. Factories are closed. Everything. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Welcome, Councillor Court, and welcome, uh, Councillor Bangry. You are online, and uh, Councillor Drew, Councillor Brown, Councillor Barnes, and Councillor Silk are there. And in the room, we have we have uh, Jeff and uh, Shem and uh, Jill. Okay, so that will give you a sense of who is here. Yeah, thank so, you. You're welcome. Thank you. I will call the meeting to order, and uh, it's a meeting of the Town Council this 24th day of March 2020. We have an agenda, and uh, I need someone to adopt it if there are no additions. Councillor? I have an addition, Mayor. Okay. What, what is it, Councillor? Do we have the background for it? Uh, no, but it'll be a very simple addition. What is and, it? Uh, I would suggest we put it under bylaw and policy, and it's our donation policy. I'd like to discuss that, please. Uh, what policy? It's a bylaw, the bylaw donation policy? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, do you sh are you sure we don't need the background? Because honestly, we don't have that uh, policy with us at this point, and it puts us at the disadvantage here. Well, no, it doesn't. It, uh, it's a very easy discussion, and uh, I think the council will, will uh, be involved very heavy on the discussion once I introduce what I'm, what I'm considering. Okay, so uh, as you know, in order for that addition to be uh, validated, we need a full 100% um, vote in favor of it. So first of all, are there some councillors here who feel that maybe could be done at a different meeting? Can we do it at uh, CCW? Okay. That'll give us some time to read up on it. Okay, so uh, Councillor Bangry, here is uh, a suggestion from Councillor Drew, who feels he would prefer it on a CCW with a proper uh, background. Okay. okay, all right, I'll go with that. Okay, all right, so we will do it this way, and we won't uh, put it as an addition this time, okay? Thank you. Thank you. So, Councillor Brown? I make a motion to adopt the agenda. Thank you. This day, the 24th of March, 2020. Thank you. All in uh, favor? Okay. Yes. Yep. Okay, thank you so much for saying yes. That helps. All right, it's adopted. We have no delegation at this point. We have uh, minutes from the regular meeting of Council, March the 10th, and uh, we need an adoption of those uh, meeting. Councillor Selk? I'll move to adopt the minutes of the March 10th council meeting. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, I read them and I find they are in accordance with what we discussed. All in favor? Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's unanimous. All right, by laws and policy, the IMDP draft. Now, uh, if you recall, in 2007, we had one version of the IMDP that was a lame, lame version of what an IMDP should be, to say nothing worse. And uh, we, we had tried two years ago to have a revision of that, and uh, the county rejected it. So as part of the ICF, we had to go through the exercise of redrafting an IMDP. The big issue with the county was always the problem with the annexation. They never could stand having the word annexation in a document. But the ICF made it clear through the guideline that you must have a provision for annexation in that document. So it is there, not at the joy of the county, because we had a map for annexation to ask us to remove it, so there's still a gag on it. But what we have instead is a map that shows growth from the core area of the town and the area contiguous with the county. So that is what has been worked out, and we worked a lot with that. And there is now a system that will allow us to meet when there are possible area of development in that corridor. So in fact, the county is taking that seriously this time around. And this past week, we were with Councillor Silk at the county and were debriefed on some uh, development that are coming around our town. So it was a pleasant change uh, from the past. So we appreciated that, not totally, but we kind of appreciated the invite to give our two cents worth. So that is what the IMDP is like now. It's a fairly good document. I don't know if you had the chance to read it. It has been revised about, I would say, three or four times, Jeff, since we started the process. And um, uh, I think we have come to uh, an understanding of where we could go in terms of growth and in terms of advising each other what's going on. So that whenever there is a development, it is uh, favorable to the town development, future development in a sense that we don't have a, someone developing a, a, a feedlot across from an area that is residential and having the whiff coming their way. So they are sensitive to that too, so we appreciated that. Any comments? Question, Mayor. Question, Mayor. Go ahead, please. Uh, this is for Jeff. Go Jeff, ahead. In the discretionary uses, under the discretionary uses of this, this uh, policy or bylaw, whatever we're discussing, you have, uh, we have marked auto body and or paint shops and also automotive repair and uh, services. My question to you, Jeff, is when these developments come forward, do they, are they required to meet the environmental issues? You would, you would hope so. Can you hear me okay, Councillor Bangard? Yes, I can. Okay. Do you, do you have a reference point on that for me? By chance, I, I'm not aware of the description discretionary uses in the IMDP, nor usually in our land use bylaws. It's in, uh, it's in the uh, municipal development uh, plan, and it's under, uh, let me see, it's under 3... Yes, he three, somewhere. 3-2-A. Okay. Yeah, uh, 3-C, I'm sorry. Let me just Pardon me? Just let me get there real quick. You bet. 
3-2-A, I don't see such a thing. No, 3-2-B. I don't have any subsections under 3-2-B. Uh, are you looking at the old version, the 2007, or are you looking at the new one? I'm looking at the one that's in our, uh, our agenda package. Yeah, but the first one is a 2007 version. Oh, okay. Okay. So I need you to go about uh, six, seven pages further to get to the new one with the big maps. Yeah, okay, I'm there. So that yeah. section does not exist at this point. So, okay. If I might, Mayor. Go ahead. Perhaps so to the broader intent of your question, Councillor. Um, yes. In the new IMVP, there weren't specific uses defined in the fringe area. Um, okay. What was defined was the consultation process is more readily defined and then an attempt to make sure that the uses are compatible. But this document isn't going to speak to environmental control to get a business permit in the municipality. Thank you. Yeah. So the, the difference between our way of looking at the world and the county looking at the world is that in our town for development, we have area structure plans. And the county has balked at that and will not agree to that. So what they agreed to is development agreements with the developer where then they discuss the uses of the land, okay? So for them, it's custom made. For us, it's more general as an application. So we tried hard to get them to go to the idea of structure plan, but it was no way. They wouldn't go there. OK? So that's, that's the best I can offer you in a difference. Well, as long as, as, long as what they plan and what they uh, propose and uh, uh, offer on the table, as long as it meets the environmental uh, contingencies, I don't care. Well, you know something? They will have to follow the regulations that all agricultural land has to go under when it's changing uh, designation. So I don't know how they do that. Honestly, I have no idea. But I would imagine that when the people take permits, that something is there and is explained to them regarding the type of business they're putting there. Well, there has yeah, to be I'm rules that are provincial rules on that one. And I don't know them, Councillor. I'm sorry. Ab absolutely. I, I agree with you, Mayor. Uh, to give you an example, a few years back, uh, there was a provincial thing that came about that no feedlot or feeding exercise uh, program could be within so many boundaries of a, of a ditch providing water sources or leaking into a creek or something like that. Right. Now, that's just one example. Yeah, so, so you're worried so, about the leakage of paint and gas and whatever in waterways. Well, exactly, and yeah. also in the, into, the, uh, into the atmosphere. Yeah, I understand. But I would imagine that is something that will have to be decided between the county and, and the uh, developers. Yes. Okay. But as long as it does not affect our community in place in such a situation, that it, it does not affect our community. That, that's my concern, Mayor. You know, I, I can appreciate what you say. All right. Any other comments? No? Okay, so if you are feeling comfortable with the IMDP, Jeff will give us the proper procedures that needs to be followed from here on, because there are a few steps yet before that can be approved. So I would um, work with Marie to see if their council is kind of on the same page. They would actually, normally what you would do is you would pass first reading and then you would have a public hearing, which you're required to do on a statute document the county wants to have a, an open house prior to any readings and they'd like to do a joint open house between the town and the county for anyone affected which is, is fine so Murray and I will work towards a date for that 
And then once the open house has happened, then each council can pass first reading, have the requisite open houses individually, or sorry, public hearings individually, sorry, and then conclude. Okay. Reading. Just for historic reference, we got through this point before and it still failed. Yeah. Both communities did first reading and then it failed at second reading at the county. So it's not just a done deal because we're at this point. There might still be some hurdles. Uh, Jeff, so the timing is obviously critical. Within the next two weeks, I would say not uh, because... Think? Right, and so I have the feeling we, we need to really uh, be careful with the timing. September. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so two things that I'm, I'm fairly okay with that. <laughs> One is that um, the county seems to be, and I give them full marks like you mentioned, we have some applications where they call the committee to come to the county to get briefed on things in the fringe, so they're applying the principles of the new IMDP, which is great already. And the, I had a second one, and now it just escaped me. But the point is, I think we're okay to delay these. Oh, that was the other one. Is that we're not required to pass this to satisfy ICF. We're just required to agree. Okay. Right. Both parties have agreed. So I, I think we can probably get to that point quite readily. Okay. And then yeah. it may be in the fall of councillors before we have the open house. So a council, a council if I understand, are you in agreement with moving forward with this document. Okay, all right. So that's that's important. Uh, Councillor Court, Councillor Bangri, I didn't hear you. Yeah, yeah. I'm in, yeah. Okay, all right. Thank you. Because Jeff needs to move forward with the next step. We are not in control on that one. Okay? Thank you very yeah. much. Okay, let's go to 6B 2019 Reserve Fund. It's a, it's a good, happy story in some way. Uh, the books have been reconciled, and uh, we have come under budget. So there are some reserve to be had, significant reserve. Some uh, will come uh, handy and timely because of uh, issues we have in town with some infrastructure, and some others we will need to discuss what to do with them. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. So... Some of them are, are projects that, and we tried to do the description, but some are things that we didn't do in 2019, so we're simply rolling them forward. Some are simply surpluses to which the full discretion falls with you. Now, I'll say that, that in all cases, all the discretion falls from you. You can choose not to do the project in 2020 and use that funding for something else, but I will put up an argument as to why it should continue to roll forward mm -hmm. in that case. Um, one of the difficulties tonight is we're going to talk about mm -hmm. a large chunk of money, $350, and talk about that we're recommending that it be set aside for outfall line repair. However, I need to speak with you in closed session about many of the details of that before we decide on anything. Now, the fact that we have no media, yeah, the I'm, fact uh, that we have no one here, we can uh, just go into closed session and have that discussion anytime you want. I would say, why don't we just do that, go in closed session, and we'll... He did. Yeah. No. I did too. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, can can can, s can someone make a motion, <laughs> Councillor Drew? In closed session. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you. Jeff, yeah. go ahead. Uh, because for us, it will give us a proper uh, timeline of what's going on here. It'll be easier to talk about the problem. Okay, so I want to talk about the stand still.